Uh, this evening, I'm sharing a version of a think piece recently published in Moose, in which I was tasked with introducing the artist Kwai Sanan and his work in some way. I was, uh, it was written um, as uh, this work, the artist commissioned for Documenta 14, titled Break and Long, while it was in post-production and soon to take exhibition form far from the lands, the people who inspired and contributed to its making. So I had not seen this work. Um, it was so much footage, but not particularly this work. It was written before um, it was made. So I have to um, update and think also about the final work um, now that it, we, we have all seen it, or we will see it. Um, I was an assistant to the artist and curator Hendrik Folkerts for this work, so I wanted somehow to um, avoid a kind of um, implied obligation to be directly uh, complementary or promotional. Um, so it's a, it's a very difficult position having worked on producing the work and then needing to think about it in public space and, and really think about it in, in a non-promotional way. So I tried, I really tried to do that. Um, I used it as a space to personalize a field report of sorts. Not one of its 11 assembled parts follows through to any particular point, I have to admit. Rather, they all point towards openings, be they historic, geopolitical, or spiritual, that belong to my initial reflections on the work's processes of becoming and its potential meanings. Professor Scott stars in this work, and I would never have imagined in, in my piece, and I would never have imagined to read it in his company if he made it out of his interview. Um, so if indeed he has, I hope the seeds I grabbed from both the art of not being governed and seeing like a state um, seem fertile in this context. Um, they certainly have been for me. So I'm beginning um, with a, about a six minute clip um, starting in the middle of the work of an 18 minute video which constitutes um, one of the two parts of the work, the other part being a 11 piece sculptural installation of the masks that you see in the video. Kwai Sam Nang's research normally begins by news feeds and rumors. He's drawn to trouble, to violence and exploitation, to charge space. As a skeptic with a sense of humor, his motto is, if I want to know, I need to go. An experiential investigation that often leads him to the margins. In fact, almost everything he's documented has disappeared or is about to be gone just starting to realize that after about a decade of his practice, that somehow what he approaches tends to disappear. Lakes, uh, forests, buildings, people. It is there he seeks information and plans how to act within particular boundaries, either evading or aligning with power for access, forced to reassess the possibilities based on the environment. Quoting uh, Michel de Soto, as David did, the practice of everyday life, which I think is very important for, in the context of Cambodia, if not larger Southeast Asia, in, in the sense that artists are really responding to that everyday life. And so I think this book very much applies into what de Soto calls tactical approach versus a state strategic approach. Sanang uh, proceeds with, uh, quote, knowing how to get away with things. The hunter's cunning maneuvers and polymorphic simulations, especially, particularly in this work, the latter. From Phnom Penh take National Road number 4, by car or bus for 260 kilometers, around 5 hours, and stop at Ville B. Take a motorbike on the only inroad to Orang Valley for around 60 kilometers, around 2 hours in the dry season, or unpredictably longer in the rainy season. It's a rough ride. The wide gouge in the land exposes the red earth and follows the steep terrain surrounded by the river below. Around halfway there, in the Khmer village of Tamal Bang, you can stop to access the last 3G signal. Continuing onwards to Jong villages, 
the global positioning system will still function, but you'll remain unreachable in 3G terms. However, you'll find other signals there. The Orang Valley is mapped into the southwestern province of Koh Kong in the Kingdom of Cambodia, bordering the Kingdom of Thailand on its west side. It is the largest stretch of tropical rainforest within the regional border known as Southeast Asia, and the largest forest of any kind within Cambodia's national borders. And I did not check uh, its statistic in terms of Zomia. <laughs> it's forest in Zomia, I should do that. The Orang River is surrounded by the Cardamom mountain range. So if you were here yesterday, interestingly, the Jong and this land would fall out of Zomia technically. Um, however, it's a valley, so it's a lowland. However, it's surrounded by a highland. And so the conditions of Zomia very much apply to this community and that land as well. Um, it is a unique ecosystem with hundreds of animals and an overlapping home, home range to nearly 40 endangered animals. Um, this is a representation of one of them. It's a Siamese crocodile, which is the spirit animal of the Zhong people. And the ancestral land of about 1,500 indigenous Zhong, a parak speaking people living across seven interconnected villages. Linguists like Cambodia-based Gerard Difloff argues that the radical difference in language and customs of the Peric and, um, and Austro-Asian languages, including Khmer, that Khmer and Zhong or Khmer, Mon Khmer and Peric um, cultures are radically different. From a distance, we see them often as the same. I'm quoting some Nang. How will you know the way? They say it's hard to tell you, it's hard to tell you. They say the vines attached to the tree on the right side. Remember the shape of the stones. Notice the bark of the tree. Listen for the water. Track the animal traces. The way of the humans follows the way of the animals. This is an image Sanang had thought about mapping, um, ideas of mapping in the research for the project. And he had asked um, his guides to make maps along the way. So this is one, um, one visualization of the drawings that plotted movements, um, patterns of a body um, going away from the water and returning to the water and the water being a central guiding force of, of the research and also what is um, threatened. Um, Samnang hoped to be guided in his process by the knowledge from the people and the land. There's very little information available in any language on the Zhong, but especially not in Khmer language. So he became reliant on guides and oral histories. But the Orang Zhong do not easily welcome those outside of their community. They collectively left the nearest Khmer village of Chipat after the Khmer Rouge era to return to collective practices across governance, food ecologies, and spiritual beliefs. A ring space is locally understood as experiential proximities to resources and spirits. Two-dimensional mapping is unnatural. Crops rotate by season and change locations with shifting cultivation practice. GPS fails to map the most sacred forest, sacred area of the forest, which is a distinct spirit territory known only through embodied knowledge. Some families participate in an economic scheme of low Im impact ecotourism, as I did and as anybody would if you wanted to visit this land. Um, the name is Mother Nature, an organization whose campaign to, quote, save the valley, strives to ward off the predatorial state and corporate interests. They are, for example, the ones who are taking the case against the state of Singapore for stealing Cambodia's sand. And they might be winning, let's see. I'm sure not, but it's a good effort. Um, for access to a ring, Samnang imitated a tourist, a, journal, uh, a photographer, a tourist, um, an anthropologist, um, trying many different ways to make relationships in this village. In the end, um, he needed to make his own inroad, um, and so he relied on hiring uh, guides that are somehow within, inside and outside of this community. From religion to state making, Khmer and subsequent colonial leadership has historically cast the forest, its people, and particular spirits residing there as wild and dangerous, in need of control, taming, and civilizing. During Angkorian times, indigenous people were conscripted to battle and enslaved to labor. 
Their names from Old Khmer reflect the positioning. For example, Peric names like Zhong, Zhong means robber, or Sra'aut, um, also a Peric um, speaking people means a skin disease. The French protectorate continued conscription on their side of World War I, which is a subject of Simnang's um, 2014 work, Footprints of Yantraman. The protectorate imported an economic equation that began the physical and spiritual transformation of Cambodia's nature into privatized, exploitable land. This was in 1840. The rubber plantations grew into the world's largest under Norodom Sihanouk, nation-building regime in the 50s and 60s, primarily the 60s. Alongside other cash crops, the colonizing the northern highland region, destroying indigenous ways of life as they were known which is a subject of his 2014 work, Rubber Man. From Sihanouk state-making civilizing mission to the elite neo-patrimonial state protectionist mission of today, indigenous territorial concentrations have been strategically diluted. In The Art of Not Being Governed, Professor Scott proposes a friction of terrain to situate hill areas of Southeast Asia as historically ungovernable space literally in accordance with hard to access, thus control topographical characteristics, especially relative to more easily accessible paddy, where civilizational structures have more easily rooted their religious and state movements. He argues that hill people across Southeast Asia have state evaded and by choice, not only high altitude or rough terrain, but also through socially and culturally constructed livelihoods that support self-governance during various degrees of friction imposed by states over time. Thus, indigenous groups have geographically scattered during various threats, survival equals self-governance. And the Zhong are very, um, very little populated in Cambodia compared to Chantaburi and Trat in Thailand. Scott notes the violent role of technology in diminishing the friction effectively, in, and here we have the camera effectively enforcing assimilation by destroying or curtailing access to the inherited terrain inherited livelihoods thrive on. A ring's friction is diminishing. Its extraordinary balance increasingly rendered for geological and geopolitical mapping to organize resource extraction and control, hunting, sand dredging, mining, logging, damming. In 2014, the Cambodian government partnered with the world's largest hydropower company, which many people know, for its, its effects around the world, China's Sino Hydro, a, a clear, uh, primary, to clear primary forest and build the Che Array Dam. If completed, the machine would extinguish life as it's known in the valley, transforming it into a man-made lake for a meager amount of voltage outside of the forest. So this entire valley would, would and probably will become lake. In at least one village in Orang, Samnang learned that totemic animals are inherited generationally in the social unit of a nuclear family. The story goes like this. In the dry season, in a time of need, an ancestor found in that particular animal a way to a water source. These animals are usually not hunted or eaten in most cases in that family, and nor are they ever represented by that family, or in general, not represented by any family. Simnang composed an outdoor sculpture workshop of four, one fish trap weaver, one carpenter, one guide translator, and himself the artist. Among a sampling of vines in the forest, he chose the raw state of one called voie tre, literally vine fish, also known as voie rom long, pnom, vine crossing over the hill, usually made for fish traps. He encouraged the team to mix their inherited knowledge for weaving and building with their memory images of the animals. I quote from translating Khmer, memory images. He fired a man who was too representational and very frustrated by it and left behind sculptures that lacked in his words spirit. Later, he reclaimed those sculptures. Meanwhile, he composed a mobile crew of five, two guides, one dancer, one cameraman, and himself, the artist. Together they lived in the forest for a number of week-long stays over the next few months. The forest offered a freedom from the Khmer police who remain, unavoidab who remain unavoidably at close watch in their village base camps. Suspicion runs very thick across the valley. 
quoting some nang again. To human, to human, to animal, to animal. In rehearsal footage, this is how Sanang's out-of-frame voice regularly met the image. The dancer, Nyet Radi, is moving close to mimicry of the sculptures he's wearing over his head as masks. Radi is a leading choreographer and dancer in Cambodia. His foundational training was at the Royal University of Fine Arts in Phnom Penh, and he specializes in the monkey role of La Khaon Khao, or a mass dance tradition or royal court tradition vernacularized in the 19th century and shared with Thai traditions. Radi performs Samnang's appropriation of Jong Todom and of Le Khaon Khao through both his discipline in mimicry, known to the monkey role, and towards something more unruly. After each direction, for in neither nor this, Samnang would always follow in the footage, more spirit, more spirit. Where is the spirit? There are many ways to read a calling for a spirit in the context of this project and in Cambodia. More are premised on syncretic belief systems, including an animism shared between Khmer and indigenous people in the region. There are the spirits of ancestors, animals, forests, rivers, fire, and so on, in a ring who are established in relation to the Zhong believers. Living across the natural landscape of Cambodia, there's also the omnipresence of Nat Tha, who is the only figure in the Khmer animus pantheon to be represented materially, taking multi-form appearances that merge ancestor and earth, quoted from Ang Chulian. And there are the spirits called on by the dancer. Those of their teachers are called on through a performance of Sampe Kru. I don't think Samnang's call for a spirit was particular to any of those particular spirits that I just mentioned. Rather, I believe he was, in his instinctive way, seeking something to help erase binaries of what is visible, in this case human and animal figure and ground, in favor of becoming something else, a space and time when what gives way to a process. I'm guided here by Deleuze and Guattari's elaboration, becoming intense, becoming animal, becoming imperceptible because it stirs the potential of a kind of fugitive solidarity between Samnang's break and long and its shared moment in time for the Orang Valley and its people, its elements and their spirits. States of becoming involve productive tensions between insider minority and outsider majority relations that determine who can affect change for whom and how and when in transformational processes towards an existence outside the state apparatus an imperceptibility. Samnang does not claim to work with the people whose circumstances inspire him, nor does he claim to affect change in their lives or for the environment that he's concerned about. His are secret invasions, and he might agree if Professor Scott situated them in a category he calls infrapolitics, acts, gestures, and thoughts that are not quite political enough to be perceived as such. Scott believes such practices do matter politically, in his words, quote, continually pressing against the limit of what is permitted on stage, much as a body of water might press against a dam. Before and during Simnang's production, the Orang Zhong have united in multiple acts of protest, from forming blockades with their bodies so government and corporate traffic cannot proceed to the dam site, to imitated dying animals for press cameras, they resist control of their waters to protect the livelihoods expressly for future generations. They don't want Chinese money. They only want their land for the next generations to come. Six months ago, the Cambodian government halted plans to finish building the dam, at least temporarily, because clearing forest and the feasibility studies for profitable mining are exciting prospect. They don't need to open the dam yet. They're making money in the meantime. On March 21st, representations of the Orang Zhong applied, and I don't know the result, for um, legal recognition as Chunchit Dam Pietek, or national original minority status. It supposedly affords more legal agency in acknowledging ancestral lands, thus legal rights to remain on them. However, the state body is a maverick of frictions that call the self-governed body out of the wilderness 
proposing and justifying relative comforts in resettlement zones. O oh, precious souls, don't go. Follow my words. Oh, my dears, the forest, past, the forest path is terribly difficult, covered in thorns and sharp-bladed grass. Oh, my dears, the spirit's words are always seductive, sweet as the river bank. But they are the opposite of the truth. O oh, precious souls, don't wander off. O oh, precious souls, what you see today to be the river bank is actually total darkness. You must beware of all the trees which harbor spirits in disguise. There are other relevant spirits worth mentioning. They're called Braling, or the 19 vital spirits residing in the body itself that are essential for physical and mental health. In Khmer ritual, Hao Braling is performed especially in times of transition, in ordination, for example, when you're becoming something in adoption. When you're becoming, when you're in transition from one thing to another, in life and in death. Its goal is to manage the spirit, specifically calling on the rebellious ones who escape. When absent from the body, they are believed to be lost in the dangerous and deceitful forest and must be lured back with sweet words and promises for the safe, civilized, and comfortable boundary of the body. And I might add the Khmer body. I asked Radhi, the dancer, about his Sampe Kru in Orang, and he shared me with him the amendments that followed once he offered to the spirits of his teachers, which he explained was very necessary because he was off stage. Please protect our spirits, take care of the forest. Please offer us permission to be here. Do not mind our ignorance if we do something wrong. Please open the way for us to find what we are here for. During Samnang's post-production, he returned a few more times to the Orang Valley, including for the purpose of a long walk to lead him to his title, Break Along or the Way of the Spirit. <laughs> 